Hello, this is Haku Dabin, and I am here to read to you part 5 of the SCP canon, The End of Death. Five reasons the Foundation wants a robot army. Now this is part 6, I just remember that. Anyway, please like the video. Comment down below and subscribe to the channel. <sighs> Wednesday afternoon was best. It was the only day that week that one could reserve the quarter Olea of Royal Hotel's conference room. Another could to fly into and out of the country without missing work, and another didn't have to cheer for, didn't have cheer practice. The afternoon was crisp, and the clouds were peeled off the, the blue sky. The hotel's design was a rigid performance of professional colors and sharp geometry. Violet Mesmer stood in the executive of conference room. Gray crept up the roots of her hair, and age was beginning to crack through the layers of makeup. Dark brown eyes looked onto where a car pulled in. The agents and speed the valet to the dark or and let two people out. A voice in her earpiece it said, Michaels and Young have arrived. They were in the carpet's room soon. The wiry run Young walked in first. Blonde hair was sufficient, was suffocated into a bun, and nature accomplished a job of a makeup. Sleepless nights were provided the eyeshadow, and exhaustion was already yet work sculpted in the face. She took her seat. Michaels frowned, the soldier with a buzz cut. He wore a jacket in spring, and he folded his aviators up, slipping them into his pocket. As he took his seat, he recites Young. Another voice in the earpiece. Lee is here. Kim is a no-show. Su Yun Lee appeared to be already occupied with another meeting. As she entered, she came with a phone onto her ear, arguing vehemently with someone in Korean. She was short, long haired, bespeckled, and growing more upset by the, the second, and as the argument continued, another voice over the radio, more uncertain Green has arrived. The girl who stood at the conference room's open door wore a pleated skirt, jacket, and tie color to match the colors of. Da's preparatory uh, uh, school. She had red hair tied into a ponytail and glistening green eyes. She flashed her white smile to every uneasy gaze as she walked in, carrying with her a wispy, not oxygenous look. Green in all the, all the name tags said Red Cassandra, and Mesmer's his file all had no less than Five other names took their seat and slid in her backpack under the table. She set a water bottle and two pink tablets on the tabletop before sitting back and looking at the others, grinning. Lee's phone call ended. Security locked the doors and took their positions, and Mesmer took, took her seat at the head of the table. The recording device sat before her. She reached over and pressed record. <clears throat> Ethics commit. It in negotiations with groups of interest on Omega case and area solutions. Begin log. Dr. Violet Mesmer clears her voice and speaks. I appreciate you all coming to this meeting. You especially, Dr. Young, as you've already been, been taking on a, fear, a fair few projects involving Omega K. Many thanks, Dr. Mesmer. Happy to be invited. Dr. Mesmer adjusts herself in her seat and brings out a briefcase. As she opens it, she continues to speak. For those of you who are unfamiliar with everyone at the table, my name is Dr. Violet Mesmer. I am a member of the Ethics Community. <clears throat> Dr. Mesmer adjusts to Dr. Emily Young. This is Dr. Emily Young, a prominent doctor in the Omega K scenario with which I'm sure we're all intimately familiar. 
Thank you. I've worked extensively in Widowmaker K, including research under the title of SCP-3984. I want nothing more than to contribute to the to a long-lasting solution. Dr. Mesmer nods. She removes a few pieces of paper from the briefcase and continues to speak. Right, yes. The man on the end with, with these ironic enhancements is Captain Eric Michaels, a decorated war veteran and one of the first to experience Omega K's effects, at least by our records. I'm not all that important, just here for secure. I like green letters as much as anyone, but could you please familiarize us as outsiders with that fancy term you've been throwing at us? <sighs> Dr. Mesmer sighs as she continues to remove the final few papers from the briefcase. She turns and see a green. Well, as you should have remembered from our society, I had told census program surveys you got, Omega K is what we call the scenario that we're all forced to live with. The immortality one? I'm sure you know what I mean. Dr. Mesmer turns to everyone else. The person who just interrupted everything is Gregory Green. Now I'm sure you or they go by a different name now. They are the spokesperson for full body transplants from Prometheus Labs. I haven't heard Green in years. Cassie's fine. New nickname I'm trying to break in. Green smiles and waits for a response. No one replies. Anyway, many of you are already on our customer list, so I'm sure you're all familiar with the service I oversee. Yes, I've undergone the procedure. Dr. Mesmer doesn't like Green continuing their comments as she continues her introductions. <clears throat> and finally, we have a representation a, 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 a representative from Marshall Carter and Dark, Ms. Su Yan Lee. Though we were expecting in Mr. Jisoo Woo Kim to arrive, Su Yan Lee pulls out a note card and begins to read. Ms. Suyun and Lee is unable to make any binding agreements associated with the product of Tibno Ultraline. She is unable to make any statements on Mar Marshall Carr and Dark's behalf, and I think that is spoken by Ms. Suyun and Lee. It is reconsidered an opinion. Suyun first read the note card. Mr. Jisoo will not be coming as he does not speak English. Not surprised they send us the diplomatic equivalent of the, of a middle finger. Aside to Suyan, no offense. I don't think that's quite appropriate. No need to be crude, Captain. This is actually good. We can tear apart Marshall, Marshy, Cardi, and Dickie's newest product right here. Please, I was under or I was of the understanding that this was going to be a serious discussion. My bad. We we're just hoping we'd actually make something come of this, not just complain to the underlings. Michael says silenced by a glare from Dr. Mesmer. I'll drop it. Dr. Mesmer strains the papers in her hands and begins to read the first page. The meeting here today is to actually address both Prometheus Lab and Marshall Carver and Dark's arguably immoral practices regarding their long term. Solutions to involuntary immortality. Hmm. 
Dr. Young and Captain Michaels are present to provide alternative solutions from both a professional and a civilian point of view. Arguably immoral? That that thing is a human trafficker er, and butcher. Miss Young points hard screen. Please, aside from Mr. Michaels, we're all decent women here. Yes. He's wearing another person. Your people give evil inescapable nightmares. We'd like to figure out a way to end to put an end to both of those things. And since our usual methods haven't exactly it worked, we were hoping to make a deal. And I have to reiterate, I am no longer responsible for nor capable of affecting in hypno utterly in marketing and distribution. With all the with all due respect, Miss Suyan, why are you here? Dr. Mesmer passes along a pair of pages to each of the members present, detailing the potential fallacies in Marshall Carter and Dark's business plan. I would like to show everyone some information regarding Ephnotrilene and its bootlegged competitors. It's quite obvious that MC and D benefits when their competitors fail, and while that may mean that more people have access to a safe alternative to eternal life and the closest equivalent of death, this does mean this does leave millions trapped in their bodies in some form of torture after having been exposed to faulty products. This not only leaves large portions of elderly and unhealthy populations unable to recover in any form, but also causes them to become a further a burden than they were in life. Dr. Young briefly reviews the article. Oh frick, I was not aware of this. Well, I am aware of this. I will also say that Hypnotrilene was moved to Mr. Jisoo Kim's control. There were no manufactured competitors. What's the prognosis for all these people? Do they wake up? I cannot disclose that information. If you take a look at the files I just handed to each of you, they detail the various ways these competitors torture their customers in the long run. Of course, the most famous defect is permanent sleep apnea. However, other issues include sleepwalking, which as you might guess is a far more dangerous is when you're unable to wake it from it, and of course, permanent vegetative states rather than and comatose ones. While defects in medicine is something common enough in the pharmaceutical industry, the rate and extent of these defects is detrimental to both the people who purchase and use these drugs, as well as society as a whole for needing to simply adjust to their new burdens as their family becomes much more difficult to care for. This... this is awful. It's economics. Miss Tu Yun, you mentioned something about there being no competitors until ownership was transferred? Is that related at all? This is a recorded conversation. I cannot disclose those marketing strategies while an active competitor who may have assessed it in management and just sitting at the table. I think we're a bit beyond that. If Young Young wants, I can put my fingers in my ears. See? Diplomatic. Make me a finger. I can't tell which one is a finger. This isn't a sound bite or a pre-recorded message. Any actions that affect the market bill, the information gets lab services will affect him utterlings. The product is extremely vulnerable to any and all external changes. Dr. Mesmer refers to another stable section of papers past out to the people at the table. Wherever the case may be, be Miss Suyan, your company still arguably has a more moral solution, despite the immoral actions that you may commit in the name of sales. Dr. Mesmer once again passes out copies of the documents describing the various processes that Amidius Labs entail was regarding full body transplants.
I'd like to draw your attention to the kidnapping and preparing of subjects, the disposal of brains, and the distribution of false information to certain customers about the body source. I believe the rest of the document will speak for itself. It's not really kidnapping. A moment of silence passes as those present read. I still can't believe Joyce is okay with this. <sighs> With due respect, Captain Michaels, you're the only person at this table who has the enhancement necessary to avoid this stuff. I was born in 1989, and it's what? 2130? Raise your hand if you've not undergone the surgery. Only Captain Michaels raises his hand. Not surprised, still disappointed. If FBET didn't exist, most of us would be dead. Well, not dead, but worse. Asleep, perhaps. I myself, and I'm ashamed of what I've had to do to continue my research, but I'm proud to say that I've only had one, the one transplant. Oh, what is this? Are you playing the bot on the water industry on trial next? Are you comparing are you comparing bottled water to human lives? No. I'm comparing to bottled water to disposable lives. Look, what do you think happens if people we use for the procedure? The answer is nothing. The thousands of people are snapped up off this planet every month for uh, or organ harvesting, slavery, and so on. They're screwed from the get-go, and their future is screwed as well. Is it really fair then to just let them go to waste when those of us with the will to live get turned into rotting mummies? Sometimes it's not their choice. I know, hard to imagine when you grew up with a silver spoon in your mouth. Look, what's your name? Young, is it? Let me pull up your file. I can tell you exactly where your current outfit came from. Give me a moment. That's a bit rich coming from a grown man wearing the skin of an 18 year old girl. La Vida Loca. I guess I had a reason to change beyond getting bored of my own genitalia. Oh boy. Ah. Here it is, young. You were fetched off the street it's in Lithuania. Your body grew up in a theater and God's shout was in the bathroom to us. You clicked your heel, it was a dance floor or changing a hat, and your parents were, oh, what a surprise! Gone. Now that body is doing jolly good work for the illustrious foundation. It's healthy, vigorous, and blah blah blah. If we hadn't gotten it, it'd just be another er, maggot hive sooner or later. Leading fertilizer scraped off the street and dumped into the mud. I don't know about you, but I like to view this industry as a recycling one. Dr. Young audibly gags. I've got your other files too, if you're curious. Please, this is not what we came here to do. You're... You're absolutely right. We should do something. And Prometheus Labs would like some money for it. What? Of course you would. You really don't expect us to hand and resources over, do you? Unless you are are able to find a way to humanely deal with the problem at large, the Foundation will not contribute to your company. Dr. Mesmer turns to Sue Young, or yours for that matter, if you'd like to tell your higher ups that. Fine. Miss Sue Young takes out her phone and sends a text. I'll tell you if they get back to me.
I mean, I can help, but notice that one of your issues against the server is we all use its disposal. Should or we could say launch a sphere of rain into space, that was on the table during inception, but that's expensive. And just have living people floating around in space? What's the benefit of that? You realize that it's not like the problem is solved because you've hit it at a couple of hundred a thousand feet above sea level. Same goes for your landfills. They're still there. They're still suffering. Why should Carter and Dark is is willing to take actions against certain competitors in exchange for a subsidy? Is that what they've texted you? Yes, I would be less vague otherwise. <sighs> I'll take bullshit for 400, Jim. Come on, the McDonald's aren't gonna. People aren't going to dismantle every drug network in the world just because you line their pockets. And as for the disposal, I didn't say launch a brain into the distress for your to create a big jelly ring. I meant. Oh wait, that's green. I'll take bullshit for 400, Jim. Come on, the McDonald's people aren't going to dismantle every drug ma network in the world just because you lined their pockets. And as for the disposal, I didn't say launch a brain to do the stratosphere to create a big jelly ring. I went far, into the sun. The freaking sun? You're, serious? You're seriously proposing throwing people into the sun? I mean, Mars is also free real, real estate if you want to be picky. Did you hear a word I said about them still being alive? You know, once I got my credentials back, I checked on what Dr. Michaels did with 39 and 84 after I left. Dr. Mesmer slams a fist on her table, causing her briefcase to clear her clothes. Is everyone here going to continue to argue about ridiculous ideas, or will you allow me to present an actual idea? Sorry, Dr. Mesmer. I just want to drill into Green how idiotic he she is. Mesmer sighs and rushes for Young to continue. <sighs> Dr. M or Michaels try to incinerate the brain to see what happened. Nothing. The brain breaks up, except all the cells are still alive, and we had no idea of knowing if those animals were still conscious or not. The sun won't fix anything. Besmer glares at everyone. She pinches the bridge of her nose. Christ almighty, you're all hundreds of years old and you still act like children. Dr. Mesmer places her hand back down. Apologies. Well, technically... No one cares, Green. You're not a kid. Dr. Young, I personally am aware of your findings in regards to incineration of the brain. In fact, a secondary reason that I've brought Captain Michaels along to this meeting is because he is the solution we are looking for. Dr. Mesmer addresses towards Eric Michaels. I actually have to shut him, don't I? Dr. Mesmer nods. Eric takes off his shirt through. Reveal his cybernetic replacements. <sighs> Captain and Michael's cybernetic implants have been able to not only keep him healthy but keep. 
made from healthy by pre-Omega K standards for the last century. With proper funding and research aid from both Rangers Labs and Marshall Carter and Dark, this could be expanded to more complex organs or body parts, or even into Android interfaces that can be used to house brains and be shut off at will. A combination of both your products, if you will. Captain Michaels? What's the, uh long-term outlook for your condition, and by long-term, I do mean long-term. I mean, parts degrade, but they can be replaced. Any more than that, I don't know. I just do what the docs tell me. What sort arts of androids are we talking about? The sort that are just robots that think good, good or the fleshy ones in the English will form normal humans. Oh. So pretty much, are, they, are we going to be like Cybermen or more like the androids from the Nier series? Entirely depending on the funding. Ideally, the bare minimum is a carp is a carapace that does not require oxygen to operate. This would greatly help the overpopulation process, as that would mean that humans could live in areas that were not previously habitable, such as the ocean. Do we even have enough metal in the planet to do that for everyone? We don't, don't have enough food or water as it is. Sigan so returns to the table and places her phone face itself upon it. Mr. Jisoo is listening. Please continue. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. We're finally worth your time. Flesh In broken Korean, I can't speak Korean at all. I'm sorry. Pleasure, Mr. Jisoo. Glad you could join us. Continue with the speech, Foundation. I was told there was a language barrier that prevented you from arriving. Dr. Mesmer looks at, at Miss Su Yan disdainfully. In any case, the proposition was simply combining the aspects of both Prometheus Labs and your own, creating androids capable of housing brains for the human population. The market isn't necessarily about the product, but about the upgrades and replacements that would be need to be made as is the case, much like a phone, actually. I know you are very focused on market, and I think this would be a good midpoint for both our needs. And to address your concern, Dr. Young, Dr. Mesmer takes out her phone and begins typing. I'm sending you an email regarding potential resource usage should this plan go through. This is currently a foundation eyes only until we receive further funding from other sources. Understood. I can't speak for our friends in Korea, but I can tell you that I am honestly not focused on the market. Our focus is on quality of experience. If you can assure me full customization and accuracy with your little Android project, then I'll pitch in, but that's all. Accuracy being the key word, right, Cassie? Customization is of equal weight. I can't believe he's so hung up about. I can't believe he's so hung up about being, being able to freak a hundred years down the road. Simple things for simple minds. And I will add that we have a far more repeat customers and first timers, in case anyone thinks I'm an exception rather than the rule. Customization is currently higher on the projection. And to able, being able to look human is less importantly currently than being able to do certain actions, such as walk and eat and such. Most of those actions are 
are unnecessary, obviously, but considering people still like eating despite their tongues running away and their stomachs exploding, having those as additional features seems appropriate. Dr. Mesmer pauses, looking at Green. She sighs before continuing. <sighs> However, accuracy may be something we can commit to should we get substantial funding beyond initial projections. Even I have to admit that we do have to retain some humanity for this to be marketable. Some? I don't want to see Terminator's bonking. Thank you for that mental image, by the way, you weirdos. I'll pitch this. Heck, I'll even support it. If you agree to put Arthmedia's labs in charge of the aesthetic side of this endeavor, define aesthetic side. What exactly does that entail? Skin, hair, eyes, tongues, fingernails, the works. So a lot of you don't get those fingernails from Eastern Europeans. Very funny. Is that the Lithuanian speaking or the human or the humanitarian? Oh frick off. And no, they'd be synthetic but lifelike ideally. How much do you think that how much do you project that to cost? The majority of funding we need is gathering resources. Testing and construction is minimal in comparison. Hang on, hang on. Before we do that, I'd like to hear what the thing with two heads but doesn't talk has to say. That question's for you, not me. Do not want. I didn't hear anything up. He says yes. You do realize I just spoke some Korean to you, yes? Would that not make you immediately think that I could b understand basic Korean faced races like I don't want this? Kim is only in charge of hypnotrally because the product is so easily pushed through the ropes. I'm smarter, more qualified, and far more stable than he is. I'll put your idea above his pay grade, just as he did to me. We will get back to you on this. Huh. Never thought I'd see the middle finger turn itself around. You're pointing right back at your boss. Well, that's definitely a pleasant surprise. You're sure you have the credentials to do this, Miss Suyang? I don't like, like Mrs. or Jisoo. I don't like what he's done to approximately 8 million people, if that number is still holding. I'll be happy to make this else pitch. I don't need credentials. I have a more stable product to offer, but hopefully decrease expenditures and excellent PowerPoint making skills. Green slowly claps. Dr. Young, Captain Michaels, do you two have any opinions on the matter or are you in agreement? <clears throat> I'm willing to let the kid help with the science project, but she needs some supervision. Our supervision. It's only so Solution proposed so far that isn't completely abhorrent. Are we taking a, a, a vote? Unless anyone else happened to bring a solution they believe would appeal to us as well. So far as I can tell, it's robots or the sun. I've already. I've already said that I don't own, own much care either way. This life, if we all have, is actually rather fun. So let's stick to ensuring that.
It won't be for much longer. I hope no sudden revelations appear if we do this. If there are no more questions, shall we put it to a vote? Aye. I also vote aye. Captain Michaels, Miss Suyun, Cassie? Aye. I can't act on behalf of Marshall Carter in the dark. I'll set my eye in the mail once I'm back at the wheel. It's school night and I'm beat. I just remember who you'll be trusting design choices to once you get your money. It's like you're trying to make me regret this. Perfect. This meeting ended sooner than expected, which I'm sure is convenient for those who, of us who had plans for the night. Shall we adjourn and... Or does anyone have any final words? <clears throat> Green, you're not actually going to school, right? Hey, La Vida Loca. Let's just fix La Vida for now. All five exited the conference in a calm, quiet. Lee and Cassie took the first elevator to the lobby, both smiling to themselves. One was more brazen and smug than the other. But then again, teenagers aren't exactly the subtle types. The other three took a second elevator. Eric and Emily bid Violet farewell in the parking lot as they, they walked to their car. Back to the airport, I suppose? Eric asked as he slid into the driver's seat. Not yet. We need to head out a little ways first. Really? Why? Our flight I'd back is in a few hours. I know, we have plenty of time. I promise I'd show your sister something. Thought you'd want to come along. I mean, I might be broke, aching a few rules doing this, but this place has been abandoned for, for some time now. Wait, Joyce flew out here? Young nods slowly. It's important enough for the airfare. Well, I guess we do have time. Great. Emily started punching in the address. Egg pulled out of the parking lot and made left onto a one-way street. Where are we going anyways? To see your brother. Eric shot Emily a confused look as he pulled up to a stoplight. You know his grave is like two states over, right? I'm not talking about the grave, Eric. I'm talking about the body. Eric froze. He let the words sink in for a moment. Then the questions came flooding. Why is the body here? What's there to see? What's happened? What happened to Tony? He said that maybe. He didn't want to know. But Young wasn't giving him a choice. You know the light screen? Oh. Right. Eric pressed the pedal to the floor. And the car raced towards 27 to site 2718. That was part 6 of the SCP canon for the end of death. I hope you enjoyed this little part of the story. Please like the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you all next time.